Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Chef. Chef is an automation platform that configures and manages your infrastructure into code. It is used in infrastructure automation and helps in reducing manual and repetitive tasks for infrastructure management. This series is divided into multiple parts. Therefore, subscribe to our channel and follow the playlist for complete understanding. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platforms which offers DevOps, Cloud and Containers Technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. You can join our all training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for classroom workshop then we have regular batches available in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Yep. So we were talking about the dev environment and now, now we are talking about the IT environment. So IT environment, something like an emphasis, we can have, uh, you know, uh, the, the person, IT engineers is managing uh, thousands of machines, thousands of machines which has been provided to, to the engineers whoever has joined uh, organize your organization and they you you guys must be managing those systems so how do you manage it so maybe install antivirus um, so it is one of the example maybe you install antivirus okay maybe you install uh, operating system altogether or maybe uh, you use some applications some other applications it could be uh, anything it could be any application which you want to be installed in that particular machine. Maybe you want to set the policies. Policies means uh, the policies. Policies means who is supposed to do what. So if you are giving a machine to developer, they are not supposed to uninstall some of the application which is only related to admin. So that those kind of stuff you can set it in, the, in your policies. So you also manage your dev environment where you manage the build infra. You manage test infra, you manage uh, dev developer con, uh, environment, okay, in the product environment, product environment, whereas a product development uh, that is called also we call it uh, uh, production environment, production environment, where you have installed your application, for example, just let's say something like uh, uh, eway so they have a application server they have a database server database server they have a cache server they have a uh, uh, ldap server i mean sorry ldap uh, load balancing server ldap is not required actually balancing server they have a, a DNS server, you know, they have an auth server where authentication is taking place, auth server. So all these servers, you have it and you don't have one machine. Remember, just try to visualize the, the kind of depth you, ha you might can have it. You don't have one machine. You might have a build infrastructure 200 nodes, 200 VMs. You might have a test infrastructure 200 here you can have a uh, depends on the bandwidth of the developers you might have it 100 maybe in in terms of managing the antivirus of your all of your organization you might have a 5000 machines all together you know so like that you might have application server also uh, 20 depends on which which product you are talking about uh, google has millions of application servers so i mean we don't know exactly the number of that but it can the kind of user base it's serving it it is having unlimited application server and they're booting up the survey on the fly so the moment you click one application server is getting boot up uh, on the fly they might have a, a 10 database servers they might have a three cache cache server they might have a three load balancing they might have a two dns server they might have a three auth server so it completely depends the number are different okay it, it, instead of 20 it can have a 50 also together so 
that infrastructure is increasing the uh, the kind of complexity is increasing day by day and now we are moving to the cloud and we are uh, creating the vms on the fly creating the virtual infrastructure on the fly creating uh, setting the infrastructure to whole infrastructure like uh, setting the vm installing the application configuring the application making sure it's up and running everything we are doing on the fly okay so how do are we going to manage it you know the infrastructure is increasing so is that do you mean you are going to hire a, hire a more engineers for that so the more time the more you have a more uh, uh, servers basically these are we call it servers the more you have a servers are you going to hire more engineers for it so but again if you are hiring the more engineers again it's it's kind of uh, cost to your company right so this is the kind of challenge which has been facing our world in a software development and uh, people have come up with a multiple tools okay okay uh, we they have come up with a chef tools like chef puppet and sibel salt lake salt so these are the tools what exactly it will help you it will help you to con manage your configuration of your all these servers okay chef that is the reason we call it these tools as a configuration management tool. so what could be the configuration what is the configuration okay so configuration can be depends upon what exactly you are trying to say so uh, let's say the configuration for a machine for a, a machines uh, like you guys can you come up with the things what what are the building blocks in your servers basically so let's uh, let's talk about one particular machine uh, one vm so what are the elements you have in that particular server correct elements or characteristics whatever you can call it what what can you have in vms or server what what are the uh, what, what are the things you can have it in servers any idea just name it whatever you it's coming to your mind whatever just name it uh, first name ip address ip address that's great what else mac address mac address uh, host name host name that's great and of course the hardware specific uh, requirements yeah. like uh, uh, ram ram disk space and the cpu cpu what else after that you have many more things for example application so you have every soft every vms you have a application okay so basically once you want to use any server you have application okay what else you have it has it you have a services you have multiple services in your running in your server what else it has a users it has a groups okay what else it has it has a command line utility like cmd or maybe bash maybe corn shell csh okay what else so you have a uh, any package manager like apt get i'm just talking about the linux in terms of eim and okay you have you have uh, you have so many things in your server okay so when you talk about the managing these all this infrastructure what exactly you are managing you are going to manage all this stuff of all this stuff means all the configuration of this stuff so that is the reason we call it configuration management tool chef is a configuration management tool why because it manages all of your server configuration now you talk about that what is the server configuration these are your configuration you have applications you have a services in your server you have a users you have a groups you have a utility you have a package manager so so many things are there in your machine servers you have a ram disk space cpu host name mac address everything this is the way it manages your server configuration okay 
most of the time you will not be able to manage mac address so let me come out of it you will not be able to manage host name you let me come out of it you can change the ip address that is there you can change the ram but using but you cannot change the ram in ram in um, uh, using chef basically using chef you can trigger a uh, trigger a apis to the 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 software which can help you to manage ramps so for example if you are in a cloud environment if you are using have vmware vsphere or amazon aws or maybe you are using microsoft azure or something like that or maybe you are using cloud share you are going to use this api using these services maybe using bash command or maybe using uh, uh, cmd command to increase or decrease the ram so indirectly again you can manage the hardware okay you can also same goes with the disk space also you can add multiple cpus to your servers by chef but in between some uh, apis has to be worked on and you can fire this api using bash or cmd or any other resources so in nutshell chef manages or chef configuration management tool will manage people hardware software policies networking so this chef tool can manage all of this configuration of these elements okay makes sense any confusion now you must be thinking how it can manage we will talk about not hardware we will not talk about the people as of now we will concentrate our focus on the software management okay now you must be thinking how it can be managed so now let's talk about the software how can you manage the software using chef okay and this is the real time most of the time you you are going to use chef for what you're going to use chef for either dev in first in setting up the dev environment or setting up the it environment or setting up the production environment and all this is having some kind of something related to software so suppose i'm just giving you example you want one particular script to be written using chef so the moment you someone joins your team as a developer they they should just run that particular script and everything should be installed like java specific java specific any other application eclipse uh, maybe visual studio also or something like that so everything should be installed so you should not worry about setting up the infrastructures by spending 6 days or 7 days of time frame and talking to multiple people and grasping the inputs from everyone and he should spark so the moment he joined from the day itself he he should start contributing his work he should start coding or he should, he should start understanding the stuff but if you realize in the normal time stuff we we spend we basically waste lots of time in terms of coordination of the things which can be easily automated for example if some qa people joins to our team they first understand how to install the application how to how to uh, how to uh, what do you say uh, set up the configuration stuff like that but that is not his task qa people has been hired not to check the installation process but to just to check how the functionality of the software has been working so if the functionality of the software is the qa people is being hired to test the functionality of the software then he should concentrate only on the functionality of the software not about the coordination not about that how to get the packages how to install it how where i should install it where is the vm all this all this blah blah stuff so basically it says like those people who supposed to do that specific thing they are supposed to do only that specific thing so if development is being hired for coding you should only do the coding if test people is being hired for uh, uh, only for the testings they should only do the testing if operation people is being hired for the operation task they should only do the operations okay so the focus on your work will be more so the productivity will be more okay and then quality of the product will increase you can you can uh, you can send the, your product to, to the market on the time and your overall you will be getting the benefit your organization will be getting benefit indirectly the benefit will be coming to you 
okay so that is where but we have to also understand the realities this is not the not the happening thing which is uh, which is going to happen in a real time environment and until we take our steps on 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 it we spend a lot of time setting up the build infrastructure we spend a lot of time setting the test infrastructure we 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 spend a lot of time setting up the uh, production server or it services infrastructure due to many constraint and that kind of constraint where we are going to do we spend a lot of time we are going to automate it through through the tools like chef okay so for example in uh, in a, if you noticed now we were setting up a svn server everybody and basically the commands was only meant for maybe 5 minutes but we spent one and a half hours and still most of them are not clear how it's been set up because we follow the commands blindly right but do you think if i'll give you one dedicated scripts okay which will do all the installation perfectly and it will do the everything in one minute so you want to you want to uh, save uh, almost uh, 70 to 80 minutes of your time and the same time you can spend on something else because installation is not a concern right your concern is like you have to have a your goal is not to how to install it your goal is to how to uh, how to make the server up and running and it should be available for everyone within within a short span of time that is your goal right so such kind of things we can automate through chef and we can you know bring lots of add on values uh, to our uh, environment and like that so nowadays if you look at the uh, uh, look at the uh, the trend now every application is moving to the cloud you just name it you've been using a lot of application now also you, if you look at our only our training we are using skype okay we i am using uh, go to meeting we are using uh, cloud share for the cloud uh, vms okay and uh, uh, for e email i am using gmail for chatting i am using whatsapp okay for uh, social network i am using facebook twitter for job i am using linkedin okay uh, and so many things so you name it one application actually you are using offline maybe you will say i am using eclipse okay that is fine maybe you will say you you use the visual studio that is okay that's a developing environment but i am talking in terms of end user end user of the software okay because you are you are the guy who is developing it so you have to have some tools and technology but this is not applicable for the end user those those people who don't bother about how it's been set up and being developed right now if you talk about the microsoft office if you talk about the microsoft office 5 years before these softwares are not in cloud you have to use the desktop application now that there is no dependency as such you can use microsoft office word powerpoint everything in microsoft uh, cloud environment you can use google docs which provide the same functionality so everything is becoming online in fact photoshop kind of tools is becoming online so everything you can do in a, your cloud so time is not so far when you will you will use hardware only to interact with the cloud not to save some some files or some do activities in your uh, in your device or computer just may, uh, just take an example of uh, uh, mobile i mean everything we do uh, we install apps we we use those apps everything is in cloud so now just see the trends everything is cloud and the infrastructure is increasing and uh, number of servers are increasing and it's multi folding it's not like one two three like today we have hundreds of server next month we'll be having thousands of server again after that next year we'll be having billions of server so like that this complexity is increasing and we'll have to also uh, update our technologies and tools to come accommodate these changes right so we cannot hire if we have a 3000 we are managing 3000 servers we cannot hire uh, 300 it engineers or 300 ops engineers for that by having the less, less bandwidth you should be able to support as many we want it because the growth is unlimited you cannot even predict the growth you never know like uh, after 5 years how many servers you will be having but you know only one thing unlimited but you cannot imagine number of 
thing so you have to have a tool which can also give you a flexibility to not give you a constraint like if you are having five pro five operation teams uh, five it teams in your programmer uh, in your team and if you say like i can my team can only support till 100 server so that is a constraint you are setting up the constraint saying that you can manage only the 100 servers why because the bandwidth is 100 your tool setup learning experience procedure uh, process is only to support 100 servers you cannot go beyond that that time you have to change the the uh, the your path whether the path which we have selected is good or not and using these tools like chef puppet and Sybil and all it will give you the flexibility to enhance your capabilities and support maybe 200 300 500 or thousands depends okay so we are going to learn about the chef in that perspective how can we support multiple server no matter where it's from the developing environment no matter where it's in terms of it environment no matter where it's in terms of production environment okay most of the time in our training we are going to focus on development environment okay chef is a very huge and very vast topic and we have got around eight hours of time today four hours and tomorrow four hours of time frame to cover chef in that already we lost almost one and a half hours in terms of svn and stuff like that so we're going to see how can we do that but if you say like if you want to uh, if you want to cover all the topics in the chef till you get started in all these areas then at least it required three to four days full day time frame so it's a vast topic i have tried to minimize the stuff to accommodate in the certain hours so it will help you till maximum extent and after that you can drive without much of the help so i'm, I'm trying my best to uh, get you started with okay so as i stated uh, this is all about the capabilities of uh, chef now let's let's move on on move on to how to implement the chef okay so chef is a tool is a configuration tool which we have discussed about their capability advantages and stuff like that how can we install the chef so how to install chef okay so chef dk normally we call it chef development kit it's been provided by chef company chef.io okay which you can install it without any hiccups just by running ah, i'm sorry chef dk is a software which can be installed in any operating system depends on your operating system what you are using maybe you are using rhl ubuntu microsoft or any other depends on so you can go and install it chef. so i don't have as of now you guys don't have to install it because uh, the vm which you have booted already it's been it has been installed so if you want to get the chef click on get chef okay and as per your and you have to go to here chef develop, development kit download it and here you find that multiple operating system installation is not a big task so do not worry about it okay if you click on rhel this is the rpm you're going to install it and how to install it rpm you know that like okay i'm using the same rpm hyphen i v h okay that's all so installation is not a big task that the vm which you got it rhl vm every vm has the rh fdk uh, installed so we can directly jump to the implementation part so be aware of it self dk self development kit is needed to start working on the chef from the day one okay next thing is do you have to configure it no you don't have to configure it the moment you use the rpm or uh, exe file or mac os D, uh, dbg files uh, sorry uh, this D, dmg file then it will do for you everything will be done by the tool itself okay so you don't have to configure it anything you can get started how to verify if chef is installed or not verify okay so command is same as goes to here chef hyphen space hyphen b and it will tell you the version of chef dk okay now you you understand uh, now next question is like how to make sure what it contains chef dk what it contains because uh, by naming itself like it's a self development kit is something like a kit it's not a tool 
you know so what it contain it can it contains so many tools it contain i believe uh, more than uh, 50 Sorry, I'm not able to see your desktop. Uh, I could see only that uh, virtual machine homepage. You're not able to see my desktop? No. Nobody is able to see my desktop? I'm able to see. I can see only your, uh, uh, you know, the Jeff Sento is the homepage. Okay, but I'm not showing that one. I'm showing different one. Let me. Okay, let me reconnect. Okay, can you see the notepad which I am using? It was, you know, I was able to see that earlier, but now it's not showing. Maybe I'm not sure. I'll reconnect and see if everyone is able to see that. Okay. Just please connect it because uh, everything I'm talking on the over the notepad, so you might not correlate with what exactly I'm talking about if you do not see that screen refreshing. Please do let me know if once you are uh, seeing the desktop, I mean my uh, my screen, so I can get started. Yes, Rajesh, I am able to see you now. You can go ahead. Okay, so I was talking about uh, initial few stuff. Uh, how to install it? So SafeDK is the tool which you get it on the Safe.io. Download it and you can install it. For now, you don't have to rush to the installation. Please. Uh, don't do that because all the VMs it already has the Ceph DK installed. How to verify it? You can see using the Ceph space hyphen V, and you can get the Ceph DK version of it. Now, next question is like what it contains. So Ceph DK is a Ceph development kit. Kit, con kit contains lots of tools. Okay, I believe it has more than 15 tools. I believe if I'm not wrong. Okay, and these tools using these tools you can. And it, it keep on growing actually. It's growing. The number of tools is growing every every month or so, I believe. So what it contains? It contains the utility. It contains the tools like uh, uh, multiple tools. It has it for specific specific purpose. And we're going to use some of these tools as part of our training program to start working on the chef. Okay. Next thing, what chef? DK contains. Now, I talked about it. Can contain it contain the tools more than 15 or 20 tools it contains. But what exactly do those tools are? So we are going to talk about some of the tools. I'd like self apply, self client, self solo knife. And many more. Uh, we have our spec uh, test kitchen, food critics, and all. This is a, we will talk about later point of the time. But let's concentrate on the some of the tools so we can get it started. So now next thing is like how to write a programs in Chef. How to write a program in Chef. So now if you you have to broaden your terminology now. You see that Chef. Chef is the kind of person who's who's uh, Who's preparing a food basically in your kitchen, right? Chef. I mean, all the terminologies in chef. Remember, all the terminology in the chef related to the real time environment. Chef is the person who's cooking in your kitchen or in some hotel and all. What exactly it it does basically? Chef. It create a food item. I mean, they they build it something like they uh, prepare some food items, right? So the food item is coming from where? They have a recipes for that. So we call it recipes. Okay. Just try to understand in terms of relate the stuff. So you might get it very, very early in that way. So we have it recipe. So every chef has their own recipes. Okay. But if what recipes contains? It contains ingredients. Ingredients. We call it in chef, we call it resources. Sources. Okay, we call it resources. What about if you add multiple recipes in one place? So recipe is the one way to prepare a, a ways to prepare a 
particular food items, right? The recipe is the one which can contain ingredients and then process. You know, ingredients and process. Okay. But if you club multiple recipes, what you can call it? You can call it cookbooks, right? It's a book. Recipes book. So we call it cookbooks. Oops, sorry. Cookbooks. What it can contain? Multiple recipes. Okay. We have many more building blocks in in uh, Chef. Okay, let me check some message has come. Chat message. Okay, no. Okay, so we we will focus as part of the today's training. We'll focus on this recipes and cookbooks. We have many more terminologies in uh, related to cookbooks like food critic. You know test kitchen and all this stuff but sorry we are not going to use as of now so i am not going to confuse you too much before getting started so now you are the chef you are the chef everyone in this particular training is a chef they are going to write a recipes okay recipes what it can contain ingredients and processes so that means how this will become a process will become a how to put it ingredients in a right way so your your meal can be prepared your food items can be prepared and ingredients is nothing but a resources let's read, remove ingredients to resources now it's become an official word resources and how to put it resources in the right way to to have your recipes in place okay now let's try to understand it now we talked about how to write a recipe so normally we we write recipes we concluded that we write a recipes what it can contain what recipes can contain so it contain the resources and then process to put it how in how to put it in the right way okay and if you put it the multiple recipes together then you can call it cookbooks so as of now i am taking cookbooks out of this thing let's concentrate on recipes okay now you must be thinking resources is nothing but ingredients so where i am going to get the resources okay so chef has inbuilt resources now let's concentrate on one thing resources and please stop me whenever you get confused so this is the basic building blocks everybody has to understood very carefully others the concept itself we will be lost actually so uh, please stop me if you are not getting it so we were talking about the recipes we were talking about the resources now and how to put it so recipe is equal to resources multiple resource and plus procedures to how to put it the resources together so i can prepare a recipe now let's concentrate on the recipes recipes is nothing but in chef there is a two kind of recipes built in built in recipe built in recipe and custom recipes okay there is a two kind of recipe so we can relate something like uh, Oh, sorry i i just missed you the terminology built in resources custom resources okay so there is a two kind of resources so either in a real time if i say like built in resources something like that uh, if you have onion you have a potato you have a you have a rice you have a dal or something like that so this is called a built in resources which can be easily available which has been given by the nature so same thing built in resources been given by the chef okay but these are called custom resources so something like if you want to prepare uh, if you want to mix these two things and come out of with the third item something like this if you uh, ginger gar ginger garlic paste something like this i'm just giving you an example like you if you grind it and then prepare it and it will become another kind of resources paste which you can use it in your recipes again okay so these are called custom resources which you use for the ginger and garlic you mix it and then you put it together and then you it become a, you, one of your resources so that, like that so there is a two kind of resources built in resources custom resources built in resources something like which has been given by chef 
custom resources which you can create your own resources okay and in msep we call it libraries okay so let me take custom resources out of it okay now we have only the built in resources now let's talk about the built in resources what are the built in resources so now we talk about till now we were talking only about the kitchen now let's talk about the real real time built in resources and we talk about the server characteristics and in so built in resources of what so here now we'll talk about the built in resources for not for any kitchen item like food item built in resources for the servers so now you want to tell me we have already discussed what is the resources in server so you have a server software that is called package okay second thing is uh, services users group apt get 7em bash 9 uh, anything whatever you can call it everyone is built uh, everyone has some resources like uh, like uh, bash we are done uh, dos i mean batch we call it batch then uh so all these are built in resources so am i making sense till now yes okay great so now I, we are having built in resources so of the server so now this is this is my kind of ingredients so kind, kind, uh, this is my something like a resources using that i am going to prepare my what i am going to prepare my recipes and i am going to give you the recipes all together okay and recipe if you follow the recipes on how part we will make it the real food item so my resources is this one now let's talk let's talk about the resources attributes so package what can you do with the package any idea what can you do with the package any points what can you do with the packages uh packages <clears throat> packages i think it do contain all those uh, uh what you say uh resources Yeah, are, I got uh, it. I mean, what I am trying to ask you, what can you do with the packages? Package definition is okay. It contains can, uh, can, can, can folder and configuration yeah. files which can get installed in your operating. But what exactly you do with the packages? So we will host it. We will use it for the. We import it. Yep. You will host it and you use it yeah. for the. So let me simplify the terminologies. You basically install the packages. You remove the packages. modify the packages means restore it you do only these activities you cannot do anything else apart from this if you have a package either you install it or either you remove it that's all okay same goes with the services now is similar to that what you do with the services you can start stop yeah that's correct so either you start it stop it restart it enable it disable it enable disable it that's good disable it that's all what you can do with the users now add yeah you add or delete or modify okay same goes with groups also what do you do with the apt get apt get okay let's skip it apt get because you guys are uh, are chill so you what do you do with the am you install it yeah install it remove it list 
query that is called okay update it so these are the normally things you do with that you cannot do anything else bash what do you do that normally you execute the commands or scripts you cannot do anything else batch also same same goes with the batch also dos commands dos utility either you run the commands or either you run the scripts okay so these are the things you can do that you cannot do anything else apart from that so in in server in 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 self we call it we call it this one is action okay so now you have got it we now what we are going to do is we are going to write a recipes we are going to write a recipes using these resources and each resources has an action in it and we are going to understand it so basically as part of today's sessions we are going to write a simple recipes okay simple building blocks and we will start creating a complex uh, a program slowly slowly so we to start with the simple we will start moving to towards the uh, complex one okay so till now am i clear any confusion any questions great okay so let's let's move on so i'm going to do the certain procedures you just watch me and then i will give you just two or three minutes to do the same procedures so please uh, see me first Hey, Rajesh, Rajesh, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, as this is a continuous deployment tool, right? So we'll have master and no uh, agent, right? Something like this, okay? So are we are we considering all the agents as of now? Okay, uh, I just missed out. Can you tell me once again what you are saying? This is. Uh, see, I mean, whatever we are doing is a client, right? It's a, it's, I mean, I mean, just a, a name as a shape client, right? So we'll have master and no agent, and we'll have master and no agent, right? Something like this, okay? Okay. As of now, let's not get into that. I'm, I'm coming back to you. But uh, is that your question? Whether what is this and all? Yeah, I mean, see, I mean, according to my understanding, you have the master and then you have the uh, like the agent, which will pull this information from the uh, uh, master. Okay. So let me do one thing. I wanted to explain later part of the time, but let me explain it now itself. So you have a question? Any other questions? any other questions okay no problem no problem so i am going to talk about just hold on for a second for over the first program let's try to understand the architecture so now uh, let me see how can i relate the same talk with this architecture uh, yes okay so your main task is to write a recipe so everything all of your 90% of your time you are going to spend in terms of set programming you are going to spend recipes but again so again you are going to run this recipe somewhere right so there is a three kind of things first whenever you write a recipes okay whenever you write a recipe you run in your same pro same machine okay and after that you push it to another machine so uh, normally remote machine you call it okay and after that you uh, first time you run in your machine so test your program basically recipes now it is a kind of program for you so you run it uh, let me put it by a following ways okay so now you can test your recipes by a following ways either you run that recipes in local machine or remote machine this is the one way we follow but once you want to deploy once you want to uh, use in terms of real time environment real time environment means using your recipes for the real work then you need a larger machines 200 machines or 300 machines or 50 machines and all so i'm going to talk about this if you want to apply your recipes your recipe in your production environment so you tell me now 
there are three scenarios. Let's understand each each one of these. If you want to test this field in your local machine, then this will be called chef apply. Okay. If you want to run the recipes in a remote machine, you will use the utility called chef client. Okay. Next thing is like if you want to apply your recipes. Your production environment. So normally, what you do? Normally, you don't run the recipes in the production environment. Okay? You normally run the collections of recipes. So that will become a cookbook. So remember, cookbooks as of now, as per the definition, I'm not saying. I'm just saying as per the and making you better understanding. Cookbooks is nothing but a multiple recipes. But it's not only having the multiple recipes. It has many more things apart from that. Okay? So if you want to apply your cookbooks to the multiple production server then you have to have two things one server first of all you need to have a workstation from where you send the command from where you send the command to server okay next is server which has all the cookbooks plus notes notes in self is the machine which you manage is basically so if you are managing 5000 machine or 200 machines all the machines has to be registered with the server so this is called notes let's say in other words servers okay and last is notes as I explained you notes is the machine where real works real cookbooks is getting executed okay where server execute expc executes the cookbooks on this machine on this machine here let me say self server let's not get confused here self server excuse the cookbooks in this machine using chef client okay so this is the overall architecture if you want if you are writing if you are a self, de uh, self developer you normally write a recipe using all this stuff you club it with uh, all the recipes, whatever we have written in, under the cookbooks. Okay. If you want to test the single recipe, use the tool called Chef Apply, which is the part of Chef DK. If you want to use the your recipes to other machine, use the Chef Client. Okay. And it can be self also. Basically. Self also. And if you want to apply your cookbooks. To a production large number of server that large number of machine then you need a chef server okay so in this in the high level architecture you have a three things workstation chef server and nodes okay so in workstation from where you will i'll tell you i'll tell you this uh, yeah i'll tell you any other questions Okay, so workstation. So oh, okay, uh, I just missed out the thing. Self architecture has the three things: workstation, self server, and nodes. Now, self server again. I'm. Uh, you have to hard code it for now. Self server contains all the cookbooks and all the nodes. Okay, and nodes is nothing but the machine which you manage is using self server. But next question is rising. How do you talk to self server? Self server. There is a certain, there should be certain ways where you talk to self server. So using workstation, workstation can be anywhere, any machines using that you can execute the command against the self server. So normally through workstation, what you can do, add the nodes in self server, uh, upload the cookbooks because all of your cookbooks is being managed by self server but 
it it will manage only if it get it gets it right so you have to upload it to the server so upload the cookbooks to the server via what via workstation but it needs some com co command line utilities you it needs some tools to so it which can talk to the server so for talking to the server you need ha you have a tool called knife okay so as i stated chef bk contains many tool including these tools so one tool we use it for the running the single recipe another chef client you use for the cookbooks and in the remote machine and self machine and if you want to talk to the server then you use knife so using these tools you can talk to the server you can add notes basically and upload your cookbooks to the server so this is the, the architecture chef has the three things workstation chef server and notes okay you can have a thousands of notes in one one chef server and you can have a, as many cookbooks it depends upon how many how many you need is and how many you write it okay is it clear now yeah yeah one more question on top of it uh, so do you mean to say that anything configuration i mean any configuration which we need to push on notes it has to be go via workstation Yes, because so see, let's say let's, let's say now let's say I want to uh, install let's say Apache maybe on ten nodes. Okay, so in that case uh, I need to go to workstation, push it to the chef server, and then from chef server you need to push it to the nodes, right? Okay, so normally workstation you are taking as a different entities. Let me tell you in a straightforward, the the machine which you use to talk to the server that is become a workstation so there could be a scenario where you can use the chef server as a workstation as well means i mean just i'm giving you the rough scenario for example yeah, yeah. you are you are running the sbn command in the sbn server itself so it will work it will not fail but you are using from somewhere right so same goes yeah. with here also workstation can be any machine from from there you use the knife command knife command will talk to the sbn uh, chef server and you can use workstation for adding your notes uploading your cookbooks and many more activities actually also you can uh, ask server to execute some specific cookbooks and it has many more activities uh, actually i don't want to give you the whole list because uh, uh, if i talk about the some of the term terminology which is not in line with my discussion then that will confuse you again it will you'll go back to the point zero so basically workstation from the workstation you use the knife command you ask what you want so you want to add the server then you use this command you use this tool with some arguments and so it talks to these things knife i am going to talk about in tomorrow session but for now you understand uh, chef architecture is conclusive of three elements three things workstation chef server nodes workstation from where you execute the command against the chef server chef server will do all the needful things like installing packaging deploying removing adding anything in the in, the, in these nodes because chef server managing all these nodes okay okay again we have so many other terminologies which i want to avoid as of now just i'll put in your mind organization okay roles and many more things so as of now i'm just skipping it to not to confuse you with the too many stuff in in a same session okay any other questions no i just okay so you might, must be noticing here we talk about the server chef arch architecture in, in in it everything is around chef cookbooks everything because you know there is only one command to add notes to the server there is one only one command to uh, add upload the Uh, cook, cookbooks to your server there is only one command to execute any cookbooks against uh, any nodes there is only one command but what exactly you are doing you are you are executing cookbooks and what what is cookbooks cookbooks is nothing but a collections of recipes along with the some other files we will come to the slowly so let's take it as of now collections of recipes okay so a recipe is your main thing so as i stated most of your activities you are you'll be spending how to write a better recipes how to be become a better uh, chef developer chef programmer so 
using it for example if you have written a script firing a script is just like one line of command you just fire it and it will do the task whatever is you have written in. but writing a script is the main thing so here we will concentrate on the writing the scripts writing the recipes and that is our main thing once you understand then how to write it how to execute that recipes is just a matter of time okay make sense okay so vishal has asked one question we can see it install component what is that question vishal Okay, fine. Okay, so I will go back to my discussion which we are talking about the concentrating on the recipe resources because this is our heart of the sub programming, uh, self learning the tools uh, like Ceph and more. So now we were talking about these are nothing but a resources. Each resources has a, some actions in it, and these are actions you can see it. So now what to do? Now we're going to write a, some set programs and in which we're going to do some certain activities. So as part of today's activity, we are going to set up a web server, set up a web server, web server and deploy our application. So our application could be an HTML based to something like that. So deploy our application. Okay, so set up a web server. So for setting up the web server, what we need? We need Apache. Okay. So let's and again, I am writing a recipe and executing that recipe in local machine. M A C H I N machine. Same recipes. If you convert, if you put it in the cookbooks folder. I'm sorry. You can run it against any number of machines. So we'll introduce the server concept tomorrow. Let's first focus on that how to write a better recipe and how to test it. So this part development will do in phase one. And self app, self management, self admin, we can say we can do in the phase two, which is tomorrow. Okay, so let's try to learn how to write a better recipes, how to write a better cookbooks first. So I am going to use the VMs which I have rebooted. Where is my VM? Is here. Okay, it got offline. Just hold on for a second. I think I lost the VM. Now it's ready. Username is root. So you don't have to pass the uh, sudo every time. Password I would like to copy paste. Here is that. Okay, so I am into a directory called root. Let me create one new directory, chef repo. I just get into the chef repo and I just verify if chef is installed or not. And I have installed chef development kit 0.2.2. That is good. Now I am going to write my first recipe. So, one more thing I, I forgot to tell you is like chef has been developed using Ruby programming. So all this stuff, whatever, if you are a better Ruby programmer, you will be the very good self programmer also. But with saying all this, you can be, it does not mean like if you are not a Ruby programmer, you cannot write a self programming, self development. It's not related to that one. Okay. So basically, if you are a Ruby programmer, you will be happy, you will be able to write your own customized uh, resources that will help you to become a better programmer in self. Okay, so I'm going to write my simple. Can you just, can you just do PWD, 
Yeah, look at uh, one one more thing, guys. Don't start doing the parallel stuff. That way, what happens? You miss some of the steps, and you uh, again you uh, come back to the same point. So first, see that I'm giving opportunity to do that from every uh, for everything on the, from the scratch. I'll give you the time, but first, see that. Okay. Okay. So I am going to do certain things. I am going to install install. <coughs> i am going to install uh, web server and web server apache 2 okay so before that i should know whether my machine has a web server installed or not so how do you know which httpd they is says like no http day in default stuff also i'll verify if there is a any services running grep hyphen e httpd and i can see there is no services running as well so now i am going to write a simple program okay uh let's say first and ending with dot rb rb for ruby okay so i'm going and installation of the package is like http dd server or any of the packages is just like one liner command p a c k p a c k package what http dd save it just one line command save it I'm 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 going to fire it. So my command, my recipe is ready. My recipe, what is doing here is, I just want to install Chef Server in my machine. So same recipe, you can use it to for uh, running the uh, start uh, installing the Chef Server. Uh, sorry, uh, Apache Server in hundreds of machine. Same recipe. First, you have to before you applying to hundreds of machine, you have to test it. So as I stated in my uh, session, if you want to run the single recipe. first of all you have to develop so if you want to run the single recipe you want you use self apply command so let's use it so i use self apply okay and then first dot rb and now let's see what it happen let me clear the screen self apply and uh, first now Chef is installing a HTTP D server, or that is called web server, using my recipe called first dot rb. So what I have done, I am going to explain you each of this stuff. Don't be rushed to apply your com these commands in your environment. Just hold on for a second, understand the stuff, and then start doing it. okay so now it it says it has been installed now let's verify it has been installed it or not so it httpd now it says it has been installed another user has been stdpd that's good i i liked it because one line of code i could install my httpd server web server and i could set it up so now what what now next so what i have done you have to understand that uh, rajesh sorry just a few again we lost your uh, stuff Just wait because there is something some network issue going on here. Okay, everybody has lost my uh, screen view. No, we can see. Okay, so let's I wait for. Okay, let's 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 wait for. Install under user bin. No, 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 no. This one, sorry. Uh, under home, I can see a shape very clearly there. Can you go to CD home? Ah, ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Can you go inside that directly and just tell it? Yeah. What is the shape requirement? Okay. Whenever you. Just wondering, is the why we created the directory again? No, no, no. It's been created by the installation actually. So whenever you install the Ceph, it will go to your home yeah. directory and it will create a directory. 
it's up to you whether you use this directly or not to store it uh, the recipes inside it so it has nothing to do with that sir okay what I'm trying to say that directory is not at all related to anything. It's up to you which directory you want to keep it. Naming conventions, anything. Okay. Okay, do let me know if you have any other questions. Meanwhile, I can answer it. Guys, uh, if you are getting connected, do let me know so I can get started. Uh, Rajesh, we are able to see you now. You can see. Great. So if you talk, if you see that my script, let me uh, open up my script here. I have done nothing. Just I said package HTTPD. So if you look at my notepad here, I said package. So we, we, we recipe is nothing but a collection of package. Oh, sorry, uh, recipe is nothing but a collection of resources. And resources is nothing but a package services users and all. One of the resources I'm using it, I just write package is a resource name and what resources I want to use HTTPD. So basically it internally talk to your package manager in RHEL AM is a package manager. Internally it will talk to your package manager and it will install it. But now you will ask me, I did not say install it. How come it got installed and what I'll do with the remove to remove that stuff. So basically each packages each resources have one action which is default one okay remember each resources has one action which is default one that you do not have to mention it for example package a default action is install okay for uh, for services default action is nothing okay so for Similar ways, each resources have one action which is default one, which you do not have to mention it. That is the reason I did not mention it here. Okay, but for example, I installed my HTTPD. Now I want to uninstall it. Okay, so what I have to do? I have to specify this specifically. So let's do that. Do action remove and Let me run this again. Okay, let's type it better. Self hyphen apply first. Now you see that which httpd if i do once again it says no httpd in any of these directories that means i am stalling so what i was trying to say each resources you have a one action which is default one and rest of the option if you want to try it out you have to be specific you have to mention explicitly so that is what i did so even though if i try this one it will behave the same way it will behave the same way. Let's do that. Now I am installing it.
now it has installed is i is i say which httpd and it says it has been installed in user has been httpd that is the way we use the packages each resources has a same same rules so, so remember one of the packages i used pack, uh, one of the uh, one of the resources i used that's called package now suppose by mistake i rerun this packages what will happen so i'll just give you the scenario and you say you see the there is one message called up to date this is one of the very powerful feature actually so just uh, let's talk about in terms of real time scenario suppose you have been asked to uh, set up a 50 servers and install your application and you did you did it very well you did with using regular sp install the into the 50 server and then you uh, configure it everything you did it and everything your 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 software is in session everybody is using that software suddenly by mistake if you run it that same program again it will re redo the whole stuff and your 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 end user connections might get broken okay your database might get corrupted or you are doing redoing the stuff same thing again that means suppose if i am logged into gmail and gmail has again replaced the database all together then i lose everything right so self is very clever if you have already done it it will not redo the things and it will say the things has been already done you don't have to redo it even though you run by mistake it will not replace the stuff which is already been done so that is how self works so till now i use one resources to install the web servers in my local machine okay now i am giving you everyone opportunity to write your own recipes with the package resources and install http db server in your machine and see that okay and verify whether it has been installed or not and then uh, for this i'll give you i'll be giving you 3 minutes of time frame and and come back to me if you facing any issue so i'm going to show you the content of this here it is so you have a 3 minutes to write your own recipes try it out i mean run it and then come back to me if you have any questions or you are stuck with somewhere how to how to run the recipes self apply uh, rajesh you know we are not called the recipes you don't have to install it as i stated multiple times you are using the vm which was provided by the url which you got it you don't have to install it self vm it has been already installed So Rajesh, this is Abhijit. The the cross checking of chef is only uh, belongs to package uh, resources or it belong to all resources. Ah, uh, someone is asking question, but I am hardly make out. What is the question? So cross checking of the resources is belong to only package or for all resources. uh sorry i did not get your question cross checking of the resources is what was the question uh santosh or narend can you repeat the question if i can get it uh maybe santosh you can So basically, what happens? Chef, whenever you run any uh, chef recipes, uh, chef manages all these things. What recipes you have run it in what state? So normally, if you are using the uh, pa resources called package, package will talk to the your operating system and it will try to find out which operating system you are using it. And based on the operating system, it will try to find out which package manager you are using it. and after that it find out the package manager 
it this resource is internally talk to your package manager and try to search whether you are having httpd package in your uh, package manager or not and then if it is found out then it is installed for you so in a inside if we say then in rhcl you have a package manager that is called yum and yum has a httpd right so it is installing for you so package is one of the resources in which you can install any packages in uh, operating system if you have a packages available if if you do not have the packages as you have mentioned then it will throw an error saying that the package is not available okay so everyone is done with that installation of uh, uh, http http this web server Guys, I'm waiting for your reply. Uh, do let me know once you, everyone is done with that, so I can proceed further also. Okay. Uh, Rajesh, I posted a message in the chat. Could you take check? Yeah, let me check. Uh, package HTTP applied had an error. HTTP package will be worldwide. Okay, can you paste it your recipes so I can see that what exactly you are doing? Can you paste your recipes also and what command you are executing to get this error? Arun? I'm posting. Yeah, but your thing is correct, right? Are you using... Uh, no, t tell me the recipe's content. What is the recipe's content? No, that is okay. What is the content of the first dot rp? Yeah, that's correct. So, are you facing any issues? Everything seems to seem to be correct. Arun, are you facing that error? Are you getting that error still? Because that is uh, not making any sense actually. As package HTTP self apply cookbooks, self apply recipes. Line one had an error. Package. Arun, are you there? I'm still getting that error, so I'm just debugging it. Okay, uh, because I mean, I, I, I'll fix it later. Okay, so do one thing. You try to remove. Maybe your uh, your operating system has the HTTP installed already. So that's the reason it's not able to install or something like that. So remove it and then install it. Try it through. Uh, sir.
Okay, so I I believe everyone is done with that. Guys, are you still stuck with this? Yes, yes, we we are done. Okay, great. Okay, so now let's let's modify our postscript and let's enhance it. So till now I was. Okay, so let's enhance it. But now, if you look at it, just you install that HTTP DB server. It's not running here. You see that it's not running at all. You just have install your HTTP D server. But if you verify if whether it's running or not, let's see that grep hyphen i and HTTP D is is not running. So that means you have to restart it using Ceph itself. So how to do that? As you know, install is the default one, so I don't have to mention it. But start is the one of the action which is there, which you can use it, and you can start it using uh, recipes. So I am just I have just added the start. and it has some error let me see that okay so now you see that it has the error it says that that option should be equal to nothing install upgrade remove purge and configure that means we have to use that and i start but i passed start which was not a part of a default action so if you look at the uh, the resources uh, package action which is this one but i added start so this is any idea why why it is like this any idea any inputs you need to use service instead of package yeah so start stop is the will become a arguments now okay will become argument so now let's do the something like we have to enable the services let me write it in a notepad you have to enable the services okay like this so whenever you want to start it you have to enable it i have a sample of it here also let me copy it here if you look at here in this i am doing start and enabling both the options together so same thing we have to do it here as well so let's do that action start enable ls fire it, fire it up again it has the issues okay in just a second not be having any issues Hey, I 
take your right packet, you should write travel there. Just a second. Ah, sorry. I'm using wrong stuff. Yep, yep. So let me correct it. Package. So after that, to start that, we have to use service package, which I forgot to change it. Okay, now let's try. Unit has error. Just second, just. Yeah, here. Yeah, this time it has taken. So what we did till now we installed the sttpd server using package sttpd now we wanted to st uh, start the services so to start the services we have one resource is called service okay what service you want to install sttpd service now we we have to do something of uh, uh, something specific. We have to write something specific. As I said, it if you look at it, this place services default from default action is nothing. It will do nothing until you specify something like start or stop. But we want two things to happen. Start means you start the services of uh, HTTPD, and same time you enable it. Enabling by enabling it, it will go and add in your services. So next time, whenever you reboot it, uh, you will have uh, you will have uh, 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 this services up and running without you going and manually modifying it. Okay. So for that, we have to specific write it two sections. One is uh, uh, start. Okay. And next one is enable. Uh, it's enabled okay and uh, then end so this is the things we have done till now now you can you please you guys will do that hold the stuff and run it and try to see what is happening here the the command which i have selected And you have a two minutes for this. Do let me know if everyone is done with that. Is it done? Guys? Okay.
Okay, guys, is it, is it done? Are you facing any issues with that? So command whatever it will go to your uh, first.rv file will be like this. First you are installing the package. Second you are starting the services and same time enabling the services. Do let me know if everyone is done. Just let do it a little bit quicker. If you are facing problem do let me know. Yep. Okay. So, okay. so if you are starting it and then uh, your VMs get re uh, rebooted, then again it will not restart it until you enable it in your configuration. Like remember init.d where we enable our under the chk config. So whenever you add any services, you enable it, you add it basically register that particular services. So enable command will register your HTTP services. So next time you reboot the machine, automatically it will get started. Okay, great. Okay, so now you have done. Uh, you have done two things. Hello. Now you have done two things. Okay. So now you have done installations of uh, Apache, starting the services of Apache through uh, through uh, this one uh, through Ceph. After that, what you want to do? You want to first check, verify if your server is running or not. So let me verify if my if uh, uh, Apache which you have uh, installed it, which is running or not. And let's open up the services. I mean the through uh, URL. Okay, guys. And it seems like it's not running. So there's, there's a possibility as we know that it is not. You will not be able to access it until you pre, uh, do the exceptions, uh, until you add the exceptions in the firewall. Okay, so firewall is stopping you to because I, I, I can see that my, uh, my if I want to see that uh, my service is running or not, ps hyphen ef and then grep hyphen i httpd and I can see that my service is running properly but still I am not able to access it. So there is a firewall issues in the machine you have to enable that particular port so you can access from the outside of the world. So normally if you are using RHEL then that is been controlled by IP tables and if you are using uh, Ubuntu then that is controlled by SFW okay. So as we are using I IP tables so let's stop the whole IT table. So if you want to stop the whole IT table what commands uh, what uh, programs you want to add and because IT tables is a service so service IP tables okay do what action you want stop okay and okay and let's copy paste the same stuff in my program Okay, and I am just typing first and I am just typing dot rb go to the end of it and just I copy paste the stuff so IP table that's correct stop and now let's run this program using self apply 
apply first dot rv now it has some issues with some syntax error let's modify it here i think i have given unexpected stuff which is not recommended and as you can see this time it has fixed the issues and now as you have already installed the httpd it's it will not do that you have already started it it will not redo that you have already in enable it so it will not do that only the things which i had added the one stopping the ip tables which i have done it now let's refresh this page and now you you are able to see the first page of your apache okay so this is the way we can enhance our script step by step to the further level okay so till now we use the two resources one is package resources another one is service resources let's use some more resources now okay so let's let's create some files now so to create a file there is resources called file resources if i have mentioned here no okay so there is one more resources called file resources okay so what are the actions you can do that either you create a file or either you delete the file delete the file or either you add the content of the file okay so these are the things you can do that okay so let's first create the file so file file name suppose this is my first file uh, test file test file dot txt enter it and file resources i believe create is the default action we can test it if it is working it's okay others will see the reference so i am just executing that uh, script again using self apply and it has worked because the default action of the file is create so i don't have to mention pixel explicitly and if i do ls it has created the file text test uh, file.txt now i want to do something more i want to not to do only create a file but i want to add some content into the file so you can also add the content in the into this file using there's one option called content okay this is my file or something like this and let's try i hope there's no syntax error yep so it has taken up so now i am putting the stuff like now if you see that here i am creating a file so that all that was already created it so it is not creating again it's but it is now updating the file contents okay so this is the difference whichever is been done it will not redo the thing until you modify it now instead of having the file name test file i want this file to be deleted and another file to be created so i am going to create a new file one and i want to delete test file so i am going to use an, another time what happened oh i seems i lost that okay now okay just save it let me come out come in okay so i want to delete i a test file so i am using same resources the file name is test file dot txt do action delete and and what will do it will create a new file and it will delete the one which i had created last time that is called test file dot txt and let's run this program and it has done it so you see that there is a file delete test file it has done it it has created the file it create new file and updated the content okay so now you see that it has done it one more thing you have to remember in self like whatever the order you write the res uh, resources the, the the executions will be in the same order 
so that is the behavior stuff of the uh, self okay so now let's do that let's add this extra things and let's try to uh, uh, let's try to run it in your program can you do that you have a uh, three minutes i'm giving you for this Everyone is done? Yes, sir. Um, okay, great. Okay, you want me to show you the code? Here it is. Let's do that quickly, so we can go on to some of the some of the other stuff also. We have so many stuffs to cover actually. So Vishal question is how to add the content to the file. So as you can see this my screen here, if you want to add the content, you have to use the action called content and you have to put it the content whatever you want. You can see this snippet of the code which I have selected. So is it done? Everyone is done with that? Guys, you have to respond me so we can uh, cover the other things. Yes, of course. Santosh, can you please check if everyone is done with that? Or Nadeem, can you please check? Yes, I you can move. Okay, great. So till now, what we have done is like we have... Uh, just a second. I lost my VM. <laughs> okay, I lost my VM. Okay, so let me get back my VM again. Root. Okay, so till now if you see that I have I was I have I have used three uh, resources, three important resources. Using one, I create install the services, uh, started the services using the service resources. Using the file, I created some of the file. I deleted the, some of the file. I created modify some of the content of the file using that. Now, you if you see the my web server here, I do not like this page at all. I do not like this page. So I want this page to be modified actually. So I want with some, some other version. So let's do that. Let's modify this home page of our server. So what we're going to do is let's write some basic HTML file. So I'm going to write one HTML file, basic HTML file, HTML head mm, title mm, this is 
my first app version one title head and uh, close body h2 this is version 2 h2 what else you want something some more stuff like h3 this is my page dashboard this is my dashboard so some dummy stuff okay dash board h3 bg color which equal to uh, blue let's close the body and let's close the HTML. so now i have written my application here and i am going to add one more uh, resources that is called file resources but i need a place where i, I am going to create it so i have to locate yeah i have to, you might need to write the html tag as well in the yeah so i yeah thanks yeah so i might have to locate where i should modify the file so if you look at the var file if you go to the cd uh, space var let me look at it underneath uh, it should be www and if it is under html and here if you put the this has been monitored by http conf i'm telling you because i know that but if you want to know that then you have to go uh, hit to http d.conf and it will tell you this location only so this place i am going to place my file so what i am going to do i am going to create my file underneath this location and you know that it has to be there with the three extension if you want automatically to be loaded like if you are putting index.html or welcome.html or home.html then only your browser your web uh, uh, apache server will detect so let's put it index.html okay i am going to create this one do content with what content with this stuff so i am going to cut it paste it end and then this is so this is a little bit longer but you can find out this is not a difference than uh, than normal file which you tried just a while ago but i'm just putting the so much of content that's making making odd okay so let's copy it in my script file i hope there's no typo as of now so we'll test it if there's no typo. Uh, i think it's only single post you need to end the code as well uh, no that's not a problem if you have Content in the double quote also, single quote, both will work fine. No problem. Okay, we should end it there. Okay. No yeah. CD chef repo, and I'm going to modify my first dot HTML. I scan is corrupt. Let me get rid of this. LS hyphen LA hidden. I have to delete this one. Okay, first. Now I am going to modify and, and basically insert the new new resources from copy from here and paste it this place. And now, now let's converge it. So remember, there is one uh, terminology which call it whenever you compile the recipes, we do not say compile or we do not say run. Normally we say converge. This is the official terminology. Slowly, slowly we will get into this. So now I'm converting my recipes. So how to converge is self apply and first. And uh, I think there's no typo error this time. So everything is doing. So now it has updated the content. If you look, go and look at it, this file ls, this location, and you have index.html. Now if I refresh my page here, my first version of the software has been installed okay so this is the way you can deploy 
and then this is the one of the simplest way actually we, we are trying slowly we are complicating our software slowly but this is the way you can also deploy the stuff but we have a more other resources using that you can bundle the whole package like zip war er or rpms or packages like that you can do you have a hell lot of resources for that but this is the way we deploy it so just now what we did we install the services we started the services we enable the services we stop the ip tables here instead of stopping the ip tables you can add the uh, port 8080 port or 80 80 ports in as part of the exceptions also so you can reconfigure it also for time being we just stop it to make it simpler okay we we updated the web server uh, with the, our index.html index.html you can take it as our software okay this is the version one so this is the way we do that just imagine this just one line of code you can run it in the thousands of machines and automatically it will be done okay so how much time will save if you want to install uh, the thousand if you want to install the services enable it start it stop it and then update the content in thousands of machines you might have to do a lot of things like log into each of machine do all this stuff either you through manually or through script but no, uh, chef will be doing all this thing for you so as of now i just stated in my uh, discussion I am only writing my scripts and testing in the local environment using Chef. Okay, we want to use this same recipes. We are not even modifying that even one line of recipes, and we want to run the same recipes in the server to all the nodes, whatever is being registered with the server. Okay, so that is the thing. So I want everyone to do this stuff. Do that. I'll just copy the con. This is the HTML content you would like to copy, or if you can paste it and do this, this activities and try to uh, update the location that is uh, that is here. So let's do that location. This place file name uh, index.html and content is below. You use yourself now instead of copying pasting. Use your logic and do that and see the changes. And do let me know once you everyone is done. Rajesh, uh, there are a couple of questions. Uh, Someone is asking question. Is not audible. Asking question is not audible. Okay. Uh, uh, if uh, if uh, the screen which I am seeing uh, serves as HTTP D uh -huh. to action start enable, uh, what if I revert it like first enable and then start? Does it make any difference? Okay. So see basically if you enable it then first it will enable and then restart so by default behaviorally you will not find any difference enable means you will see the difference only the next re reboot so it's not making any sense okay only the flow will be changed it will in the functionality you will not see any changes flow will be changed first it will enable the services and then it will restart the services but Okay. Yeah. Uh, I tried both the ways, uh, both for starting and stopping. It works either way. You interchange it, then also it works. Uh, no, I just said functionality wise, you won't realize it until you reboot the services. You are getting my points. Enabling is a one way to register the services to init.d. So it will impact only if you are rebooting the services. Okay. And uh, the other thing was, uh, I mean, once I am updating the file, it overrides the content of file, existing file. Uh, so for example, here uh, in this case, index.html file, if there was any content in previous case, maybe one, two, three, whatever it is, so uh, this will override uh, with whatever you have written, right? 
uh, yes if you have a changes in your in, in your recipes then it will be over it will be doing that recreating the stuff so if you have a changes in file name then it will change the file name if you have a content changes then it will just modify the changes it will not no, append it. it it was overwriting i can paste you uh, the log there's a, two things it will not uh -huh. append it it will not append it yeah, it will override. Yeah. Okay. So, is there any way to append a file? Uh, so, basically, this is your file. If you think like if this is your content and you want to insert something else, then write that in the recipe itself and extra things will be added. Like, again, it will be override writing from the scratch, but it is the, this is the way how you use the resources. But okay. if you, uh, but what, and, uh, but one more thing, let me complete. But one more thing, if you want, do not want that to be changed and you want to append something to the file, there's a certain other ways also. For example, if you use the, some, you, you, you can write some bash script with the appending functionality. Okay. And you can execute that bash script, batch, sorry, cell script with the bash resources that there's one resource called bash. Okay. So that will be done also. One more thing. If you can parameterize, for example, if you want to change only blue, okay, to red, and you want to do only thing, then there's a ways to you can pass it arguments, and you can do that one also. So there's so many other ways. We are just learning some of the basic stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Got it. And uh, last question, like uh, there was some uh, dot file uh, which you deleted. So. Okay, the yeah, file, uh, the yeah, part. file which I deleted, it's not related to Chef. Uh, what is happening? I am losing my session. So in opening mode, the file was open and I lost my session. So what it does, once you disconnect and uh, kill the session, it creates this one swapping file. That's the operating system fundamental. Okay. Hello. I lost it, I think. Welcome to the conferencing service. Please enter your PIN code followed by the hash key. Your call has been placed in conference. After the tone, please say your name followed by the hash key. Okay, so yeah, I had lost this session. So yeah, is that answer your question? Who was asking questions? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah I got it. Thanks. Okay. So now everyone have done it this content. You can modify your content, update the server, and then you can see the changes, whatever you can have your own HTML also. Like that you can deploy your own file also. So this is the way we do that so till now what we covered we covered the three resources package services and uh, file yeah file resources and we are going to cover more resources tomorrow okay and tomorrow we're going to talk about how to create a cookbooks how to upload the cookbooks to self server how to uh, up, uh, how to register the nodes to the self server and how to use the self server uh, against any any of our automation Okay, so I believe you guys have done it till now. Let's do the some QA sessions now, and after that we'll wrap up the session. Okay, before before starting QA, any questions you guys have remain? Yeah, Rajesh, uh, can we just you know uh, like uh, let us know that uh, you included a single um, in a single quote included uh, that file right HTML part. So yes. Can I just show that. Okay. Here it is. Uh -huh. Okay, I lost this VM once again. Uh, okay, can we just skip in the chat, please? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll I'll write it once again. Just a second. I'll I'll show I'll show you. file HTTP index dot HTML do content 
this one and ending with this one and then end. This is the one which I am selecting actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so everyone is done with this? Uh, no, just give us two minutes. Okay, sure. Is it done? Guys, are you there? Hello? Yeah, yeah, we are there. I just we are trying, still trying. Oh, we are just trying it. Just okay, okay, you. no problem. Can we go to uh, Q&A or you, you guys are facing any issues? Okay. Okay. So let's have one exercise. Actually, I am. Uh, everybody is going to ask. So basically, I'm I asking this question randomly. I'll be asking, and you guys have to answer it. Okay, so this question goes to Manoj. How how do you define resources? What is resources? Action. Yeah, it's from Manoj actually. Is not there? Okay, so I'm. Okay, what is the code? What is the resources? Okay, what are the resources you have used in today's session? Uh, 
Okay, so resource is nothing but a kind of characteristic of the server. Okay, so what is the characteristics like services, package, users, group, uh, all these things are a file, you know. So these are the resources. Okay, next question goes to Om Prakash. What is action? Uh, what means means particular resources? What action is maybe start, uh, start, stop, whatever uh, content, uh, changing of content? Yeah. So each, in other way, each resources has some of the uh, some of the uh, behavioral stuff. Like what he is supposed to do with that particular resources. These are called actions. Okay. Next is Pankaj. What if you do not specify any action with resources? Yeah, and for package, what is the default action? And what about the services? No. For services, default action was nothing. That's the reason we specified start. You do specify the actions only if if it is not a default. Okay. Okay. Next question to Abhijit. Okay. What is recipe? Uh, recipe, you can say something like this. Recipe is nothing but a unique script in Chef which, which contains many resources. Okay? Okay, so I think uh, we are done with this uh, session for today. Uh, we will connect tomorrow again. And meanwhile, I'll send this all this uh, PPT and the lab classes and quiz information. And you can practice till tomorrow. And we're going to meet tomorrow again and we're going to learn more about that recipes, cookbook, server, and notes, and all other related stuff. Okay? One more thing, guys. One more thing guys, if, if you want to receive, I am going to send tonight all the videos, whatever we have got till now. So if you want to receive it, please send me an email with your Gmail ID and I will I will send to those people who have sent me the Gmail ID, that video link. Okay? Yes, yes. So, yeah, everyone please send that Gmail ID to you. I think we already sent it, so if you want... I have got few of them actually, not everyone. Okay, what's the size? One video size. Hello. How much will be the uh, like size of this video? Like uh, this will be uploaded. Uploading, right? Let me tell you, this is this will be up, this is uploaded to uh, YouTube. So you, uh, you need, I need a Gmail so they will be able to access these videos because I'll be giving the access to only those people who is sending me the you uh, uh, Gmail ID. Because these videos will be up level, so might uh, it not, not might not be good for the public users actually. No, but you can basically uh, send this to our uh, FSI, right? Because if you are just sharing the URL. Ah, uh, yeah, but this these videos will be not listed as a public, so URL not might not serve purpose. So either I can invite to your G, uh, emphasis IDs as well, but in that case you have to register your emphasis IDs as a gmail id so that's not a good practice so better you if you can send me gmail so that videos you can access all the time okay 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 and that is one more thing like uh, regarding the thursday or friday session mm -hmm. uh, there is some change in schedule because of this already uh, calendar change for our organization mm -hmm. so end of the day i will send you mail okay. according to the uh, timetable Sure. Yeah. Schedule that we are not having a session on Thursday. Okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, there is some change, so I will uh, check and I will uh, send email. That yeah. Do let me know at least one day in advance so I can plan my stuff here as well. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. So let's wrap it up. Thank Thank you very much for attending. Let's see you tomorrow then. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned from this video. 
प्लीज बी काइंड एनफ टू लाइक इट एंड यू कैन कमेंट एनी ऑफ योर डाउट एंड क्वेरीज वी विल रिप्लाई टू देम एट द अर्लीस्ट वॉन्ट टू स्टडी फॉर द सब्सक्राइब टू आर पेड मेंबरशिप टू गेट अ डीप डाइव इन टू ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक डू लुक आउट फॉर मोर वीडियोज इन आवर प्ले लिस्ट एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आवर डेवर स्कूल चैनल एंड हिट द बेल आइकन टू लर्न मॉ कीप लर्निंग